Welcome back to the My Mac Podcast. I'm your host, Brooke, and I hope you enjoy all the interviews and conversations we have planned today. Now on to Jay Lynn with her interview with Miss Tripp. Hi, and welcome to my segment of the My Mac Podcast. Joining me today is Mrs. Tripp, the principal of the Montcalm Area Career Center. Welcome, Mrs. Tripp. Tell Hi. us about yourself. All right. So I am the principal of the Montcalm Area Career Center, but my actual title is Associate Superintendent of CTE and Early College, which really just means I run the career tech building and I also run the early college program and I oversee any state approved career tech ed programs in the county. Great. What resources or opportunities does the Career Center offer students after graduation? So it's kind of an interesting mix because all of your records actually go back to your local district. So we don't hold your grades here or your attendance or any of that. We report it back to your local district. It goes on your transcript there, and then you're awarded credits from them, not from us. And so let's say in two years you were um, graduated and, and going to college and for some reason you needed information about the classes you took here, you would actually want to contact your local high school um, rather than contacting us because they're going to have all of that information. However, we do offer um, some assistance with articulated credit. So if you earned some college credit while you were here at Career Center, then you would want to get a hold of us because we would be the person who would help you transfer those credits to an institution where we have an agreement with them. Hmm. Great. Can you share some success stories or notable achievements of students from the Career Center? Sure. This was a this is going to be tough though because there are so many. Mm -hmm. um, so I will try to think of like a couple big ones, right? Um, because we have a lot of students who are successful in a lot of different ways. Um, but probably one of the bigger um, success stories is a student who was in our auto program for two years and actually passed all eight state mechanics certifications before he left, which meant he graduated from high school as a master mechanic. So he was able to go out, get a job easily, um, because many times um, repair shops will hire someone who has the certification in br just brakes or just you know some other piece and he actually had all of them so that's hard to do at you know 16 17 18 years old so that was pretty impressive mm -hmm. and then last year for the first time we had two students that are in our health class they were um, two years in our health class and then graduated having already been accepted into MCC's nursing program mm -hmm. and so that's tough to do because MCC requires you to take five classes before you're even eligible to apply to the nursing program mm -hmm. so in addition to doing our program here, they were taking dual enrollment credits to get those five classes out of the way so that then in May of their senior year, they were able to apply to the nursing program and started in the program this fall. So a couple of huge examples, but like I said, we have kids who have lots of success here um, in their own little ways. You know, we have a lot of students who come in and they're very shy and they don't like to talk and we build up their confidence and teach them that they do have the ability to do some of the skills that we're teaching them. Um, and just that gives them the, the confidence to go forward and, and either get more training or go right out into the workforce. Um, so lots of success stories. Great. In what ways does, has the Career Center adapted its approach to career guidance and responses to the COVID-19 pandemic? So one of the biggest things we did after COVID was we hired Kylie Johnson. Um, we noticed that students were a little more stressed out, um, struggling to handle being back in the social environment um, because many of our students were at home learning, um, some of them for over a year. And so bringing them back in, you know, was a little stressful and a little hard on them. And um, so there were some emotional things to deal with. Um, but then Kylie also, part of her job is helping with um, career counseling. So um, if you aren't sure yet what you want to be, maybe you took a program out here and you're finding out it's not the program that you wanted, um, you can go to Kylie. She can give you some um, interest inventories, talk about what jobs are out there, what you might be interested in. Um, so that's a piece of her job too. So I think she's our biggest addition mm -hmm. um, post-COVID uh, to deal with both of those issues. Mm -hmm. And then can you share some insights of role of internships, co-op programs, and other experiential learning opportunities that the Career Center offers? Sure. So we offer work-based learning. And if you are doing work-based learning through a state-approved 
career tech program, you're actually allowed to do more than if you did it through a local high school. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you do a um, work-based learning placement where there's dangerous equipment. And if you go just through your local high school, you're not allowed to touch that equipment until you're 18. But if you're in a career tech program, you are allowed to work on some of that equipment because we have that same equipment here. And so the, um, the state knows you've been trained on it. There's special circumstances. And so you're allowed to do more of the job um, if you come through a career tech program. Um, the barrier for our students who want to do work-based learning a lot of times is transportation. Um, they have to be able to get themselves to that work site and with uh, driver's training no longer being included in schools, it can be pretty expensive to go through that, get your driver's license and do all that before you're 18. Um, so we don't have as much work-based learning as we did in the past, um, but we are still putting students out there. We have students that just started work-based learning um, this past week, so definitely an option for students. And I think it gives them you know, we can try to simulate what the job would be like here at the Career Center, but you don't really know until you're actually in it. Um, and so it gives them a, a broader idea of what that career would be like if they choose that. Great. That's all I have for today. Thank you for joining us. And Thanks that's for all having for my me. Segment. Thank you so much. Now, Leah would like to talk about resumes with her new guest. Hi, I'm Leah, and in today's interview, I'll be talking to Mrs. Lutz Crable about resumes. So, resumes. How do you create one and why should you? Well, you will learn how to create one in each of your individual programs because each of our instructors will work with students to help them create resumes. And I will be in some of the classes because I team teach that with some of our teachers as well. But basically you are, and you can find this on Google, like you can Google the sections that you're going to put in your resume. And then my suggestion is using a template if you're going to use our template we have one created for students but in general if you're looking for a word template I would not use those because they look like you're using a template and then it just looks like you're trying to um, to cut corners and people aren't really interested in someone who is willing to cut corners but why do you need a resume you need a resume to convince someone else to hire you so oftentimes, especially when you're young, you get jobs because you know somebody, you know, and someone can get you in the door. And actually that's common as you get older too. Like we have a network of people and those people help us get jobs. But sometimes you find a job that you would like to have, but you don't know anyone to help you get in the door. So a resume is how you present yourself to that particular business. So you were talking a little bit about on what resumes you shouldn't use. What one should you use, like the format? Oh, you can create your own format. And again, if you look in Google, there will be tons of different options. So you can see what it looks like. But the template that we have for students here, I created by hand. So I, I put all of the pieces in there and I created the spacing and stuff so that it would be easier for students, but still not necessarily look like one of the Word templates. What should you put in your resume? Your resume is your opportunity to share information about you. So you want to share some of your education and what you have done before. You want, If you've worked before, then you want to share your previous experience. If you have skills or certifications, you want to put that stuff in there. It's just a way to highlight what you have done before and what you could bring to the table for a business. And then you really want to focus on using some action verbs instead of like, I did this and I did that. You want to focus on some action verbs, but then you do want to focus on what you actually did, what you completed, what you achieved. That's what they're interested in. Should resumes be updated? If so, why? Resumes should always be updated. It's a good idea to create your resume now and then you add things into it over time. And the reasons are two different things. One, you forget. Like you forget what year it is that you um, took a certain class or you forget exactly when you started or ended a job. And you want those things to be accurate over time. And the older you get, the more there is to remember. So as a young person, you may think, well, I'll always remember that. 
but trust me, you won't. So that's one reason that you would update it. The other reason is your resume should be a little bit different every time you submit it for a job because every job that you're going to go for is looking for a little bit different skills or a little bit different in terms of certifications. So you need to tailor your resume so that it matches that particular job. So in actuality, you're gonna update it anytime you're looking for something new or something significant has happened in your life that you wanna record. And that's become even more important now that there are applicant tracking systems because a person isn't always going to look at your resume. It may be that they have a computer system and all of the resumes go through the computer system and then the system chooses a few that an actual person is going to look at. So that's why you wanna make sure that the words that you use in your resume match the words in the job posting of what that particular company is looking for. What is a cover letter and why should you have one? A cover letter is a letter that gives you an opportunity to introduce yourself to a business that is interested in you and you are interested in them. It gives you a chance to add more stuff in, like you can put things that are not in your resume. So it's like two opportunities to share information about you and why you might be a good fit for that particular job. A cover letter is generally in complete sentences and it gives them an opportunity to see um, your writing and how you can communicate in a written format because a resume does not generally have full sentences and actually it should not have full sentences. It should be quick and easy because um, Hiring managers, they're not necessarily spending a lot of time on each resume. So the idea is to have lots of white space and make it easy to read in a short amount of time. Thank you. Do you have any advice you'd like to share before we close? Yes, I do have one final piece of um, advice, and that would be to when you're setting up your resume, lead with your best shot. So some people are going to be more impressive in terms of what they have in their education section. If that's impressive in your resume, then lead with that. But maybe it's your experience and you've done a job that's very similar to the job that you're looking for, well then you're gonna lead with that. Because remember, they may not be spending a whole ton of time looking at your resume, so whatever you feel is your best shot, lead with that best shot. Thank you for coming in today. You're welcome, Leah. And thank you, audience, for tuning in. Now, Lily and I have a very special segment planned for y'all where we talk about something that's laying heavy on our noggins. Hi, today me and Lily are trying something new where we're combining segments and we're going to talk about something we have very strong opinions about. Lily, what are we talking about today? Today is mostly going to be about social media and how it has influenced younger kids, mostly mm -hmm. about 12 year olds in Sephora. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we have a special guest today. She's very special to us. She's very dear to us. <laughs> this is Leah hi. from Digital Arts. Say hi to the... Uh, uh, hi. Okay, so basically this came ab about when we saw Sephora kids on our TikTok For You pages. And it's basically this Gen Alpha generation where they like to go into stores that are not... Meant for them. That are not, yeah, like targeted. They're not supposed to be targeted towards them. And they use products that aren't targeted for them. And um, it's just been a trend that kids have been more rude recently. Now all the social, part of the social media influence is that um, the social media has made them think that they need to be, think to look a certain way mm -hmm. and use certain products, mm -hmm. even if they're not meant for them or extremely expensive. And then the parents don't have sort of a grip on what that means, mm -hmm. like because they're, they're their kids and they want to spoil them or like just mm -hmm. let them do what they want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you have any additions to this, Leah? Yeah, and how like they like act towards adults actually who need the products mm -hmm. too, and how they're like, oh, well, I bought it already, and they buy multiple, not just one, mm -hmm. and they sell them out. 
I saw one video where the this mom took her kid to Sephora and she had to beg her kid to take her product basket from eight hundred dollars down to five hundred dollars and she had to beg her kid to put stuff back. I was like, This is crazy. But yeah, and I've seen a bunch of stories about how these kids have just been so rude and like stealing these products from people like I got to this product first and so it's like but they don't even need it no they don't even especially like all the retinol and stuff like that's yeah. a fancy word to be using around around these parts but um, it's for like anti-aging and mm -hmm. they're literally stealing it from people that might actually want to use it and it might actually not damage their skin mm -hmm. <laughs> like when they use it it might actually help their skin so I saw one just a few days ago, I think, where a girl who works there was telling a story about, I think it was a nine-year-old that, so the worker was helping an, an older woman that was mm -hmm. actually looking to buy something, and the little kid came up to her face, shoved a rare beauty blush in her face, and said, we don't have this shade, <laughs> and the lady, like, stopped helping the other person and went to go look at the, like, shelf where, the, where they had the rest of them. And she's like, it's right there. You yeah. didn't even look. Literally. It's right there. Um, so and then she went back to helping the other person. Mm -hmm. And then, like, she did it again with mm -hmm. three other products. And, and like, it's not like we're saying kids can't, like, wear makeup or, like, no. do any, like, do these things. But it's, like, it's just them, the It's just the aging products. Yeah. That, and them being rude to other customers yeah. and, like, the workers there. It's just not. I also think okay. that the what they watch online too affects them. Yes, the iPad kids. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My little siblings are iPad kids. Oh no. <laughs> I have two little sisters and they're iPad kids. And if they go like a couple hours without it, they're like so rude to me and they're so rude to their parents and it's just, it's crazy these and iPad kids. parents give the iPads to their kids mm -hmm. so they don't have to take care of them, mm -hmm. so they don't have to raise them. And yeah. this has just become a huge problem in mm -hmm. our civilization that yeah. I think could and be I saw, avoided. I saw an article that said that social media is their main form of sociali socialization. Like these kids are mainly talking to their other friends on social media. Mm -hmm. So how are we expecting them to not be so obsessed with it, you know? Yeah. And like we're like kind of the older generation of this, mm -hmm. but we're kind of obsessed with our phones too. And it's just like a more extreme version. It just seems yeah. more extreme when the kids are so young. We know when to put our phones away and we're mm -hmm. polite. Whereas mm -hmm. they can't put mm -hmm. their And the parents aren't helping to stop. They don't know any better because no. they weren't taught that. Yeah, yeah, they were shoved a tablet in their face mm -hmm. and the parent just did what they wanted. Mm -hmm. They didn't raise them. And I've also seen stuff that it goes back into parenting that it's like materialism parenting. Materialism parenting. Materialistic. Yeah, and um, basically these parents are forcing their kids to be online or like allowing their kids to be obsessed with being online and then trying to make up for it with buying them all these fancy like products and stuff. But you can't mm -hmm. buy love. No, 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 but yeah. And how are you gonna gain respect if you never create a bond with your child? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's really hard to like not blame the kids either yeah. because you see these kids in these like um, places, these uh, like Envi stores, yeah. environments, <laughs> yeah. and they're just, they're so rude, but it's like you can't blame a nine-year-old for being rude to. Because like, it's really on the parent yeah. at that point. Right, yeah, like the parents um, shape their kids. Yes. You know? Like if you give a nine-year-old your credit card and say go buck wild in a Sephora, <laughs> then that's your fault. Like yeah. that's not, mm -hmm. you can't. All you know is like before you know it, you spend a thousand bucks yeah, on, at Sephora. The most literally. I've ever seen was somebody, some woman gave their 10-year-old her credit card and she spent three thousand dollars on just sephora products like a basket full that's of insane. multiple drunk elephant stuff that's multiple insane. rare beauty whatever mm. and um, that could be used for older people who actually want better skin mm. whereas kids have already nice skin they don't need any yeah beauty products mm -hmm. and i think the bigger like the biggest picture here is like the society's pressure on like women and girls in general and it's it's like little boys too and yeah so it's like the younger boys I, too but it's mostly we're seeing it in 
young girls. I hate the stereotypes because if you mm -hmm. give a tablet to a kid and they learn all this stuff they're supposed to be, they mm -hmm. try everything in their power to be liked mm -hmm. because that's just what kids are. Mm -hmm. That's what kids do. Yeah, because um, right now the standard is like beauty, mean, mm -hmm. like if you have more beauty or if you use more products to make you look more beautiful in a way. Um, society thinks that you're more like healthy in a way or like and then it makes you seem more popular especially with little kids because yeah. popularity is so important to them usually yeah they just want to be liked that's yeah. all they want mm -hmm. do you have any wrapping up thoughts Lily I think you covered it all like the mm -hmm. pressure on females or even just anybody mm -hmm. but can I add a yeah. few things yeah of course um so in order to s fix this problem, we, the parents, mm -hmm. need to s take away the tablet for just a little bit and spend actual quality time with their kids mm -hmm. so they don't feel like they have to compete to be liked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a way to fix it. It's just it takes more effort than just shoving an iPad in the kid's face. You know? Then if you do that, why even have kids? Right, yeah. But anything else? No. I think that's about it for me. Thank you for watching and listening on this joint episode of Me and Brooks podcast with our special guest, Leah. Thank you for listening to our outrageous opinions. Mm -hmm. Now on to Zaley for the program spotlight. Hi, welcome to my segment on the MyMac podcast. Today I will be interviewing the public safety instructor. So will you please introduce yourself? Uh, my name is Jason Jacobowski. I teach public safety here at the MAC. Cool. So how did you get into teaching public safety here at the Career Center? Uh, I was a police officer in Big Rapids for 18 years and an opening came here at the MAC to teach and the former teacher, uh, we had a common friend and he told I, he got a hold of me and I applied through that. Cool. Um, what does your program provide students and where can this program take them? Um, so my program provides students with kind of a general knowledge about the whole field of public safety um, from police, courts, corrections, uh, criminal law. Um, students kind of get a little taste of it all of the fields with or all of the jobs within that field uh, or at least a lot of them i hope um, and hopefully they can use that as a basis to get a job in an area that they're interested awesome um, and what advice do you have for students who are interested in joining your program um i would say a big piece piece of advice i would have for them is that my class is a college class. They get college credit for it. Uh, so they should know that there is going to be some book work. It's not all just doing fun stuff. Um, and a lot of the ads, we show the fun stuff, but that's not an everyday thing. Uh, the plus side of it is they get college credit for free, um, but the downside is they have to do the college work that goes along with it. So there's um, look, notes, lecture, and book work involved also. But we do a lot of fun stuff kind of on the side too. Cool. Um, thank you so much, Jason, for joining us on the MyMac podcast, and we'll see you next time. Thank you so much, Saley. Adrian had a great tech talk with his new special guest. Let's take a look. Hello. Welcome back to the MyMac podcast. Today, I'm with Ken Goffman, Career Outreach Coordinator for Region 10. Uh, how are you, Ken? I'm well. How are you today? <laughs> I'm pretty good. Uh, so what is uh, Region 10? Region 10 is four counties in Michigan, uh, Montcalm, Gratiot, Isabella, and Ionia counties. So I work in all four of those different schools. All right. Uh, what exactly uh, does your job entail? Um, I go into high schools and middle schools. I talk with students about careers and kind of help them with career exploration and do different types of presentations. Ah, yes. Uh, one of these uh, presentations uh, I've heard of is your action plan for career or college uh, preparedness. Yeah. Uh, could you very uh, give, a, give a brief uh, summary of your uh, presentation? Yeah, um, that particular part of the pre I'll kind of highlight the presentation of the action plan, and that is where we um, just talk about things that students can do to really um, be able to learn more about careers and also um, uh, 
uh, kind of connect with people who are in those careers. So uh, the, the first thing in the action plan, I always say is this research, like just, you know, do your homework, study, um, look at things like Zello and other types of uh, online resources uh, using ONET or uh, um, just researching careers, find out as much as you can about them. Uh, so that's the first step. All right. <laughs> you want the second step? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Second step would be uh, uh, basically talking with people who are doing the careers that you want to do. So if you're, you know, you want to be a dental hygienist, next time you go to the dentist, talk to the hygienist. Ask them about what they do, what they like, what they dislike. Try to learn from them. They're the people who are doing the job that, that you're interested in doing. So they're the experts and they'll, they'll give you a lot of great advice. All right. Uh, third thing would be um, trying to set up some interviews. So this might be a little bit, a little more formal, where you're actually pursuing people who are doing the career that you want to do. So it might be um, calling them up and saying, "Hey, I'm a, you know, I'm a junior, or senior, or tenth grader at such and such high school. I'm interested in your career. Um, could I sit down and go to lunch with you and just you know, pick your brain, or can I talk with you right now on the phone?" Um, trying to interview them face to face is usually better, but if you can do it by phone, that's still good. Have a list of questions and just pick their brains, find out what they like, what they dislike, advice that they have for people who are doing those jobs. So again, you're, you're learning from the people who are doing the careers. Uh, the fourth thing is to set up a job shadow. So if you can do that, that's awesome as well. Actually going on location, talking with students, or talking with people doing those jobs and seeing what they do and where they do it. You can learn a lot about a career when you're actually on location. And sometimes that's some of the most valuable information you're gonna get there because you say, man, this is not a place I wanna work or this is a place I would love to work. It really helps you decide. Um, the last step I would say is just um, basically um, Continue to learn education, um, talk, you know, finding out what are your education and training options for the career you want to go into. Um, every career requires certain types of things you have to prepare for that career for. Now, it might not be going to college. It might be going to college. It just depends on the career. So trying to look into that and see what's involved with that. All right. That's kind of the, that's the action points in a nutshell. All right. <laughs> what would you say is the uh, most important uh, point in your action plan if you have one? Well, I think they all kind of relate to to the idea of research. Um, you know, you, you you don't know what you don't know, and so if you're really trying to figure out what your future is going to be, you're really going to want to research. You want to sit down and and um, and dig into that and try to find out about those careers. Uh, I'd say the, the the most dangerous thing is to say I'm just going to go off to college and figure out my life because college is a really expensive place to try to figure out what you want to do in life. You're much better off if you can start figuring that out early on um, before you do that. So if you do go to college, you've already got, hey, this is my goal in mind. This is what I'm going to do with that college degree. And now it's very specific instead of just, hey, I may or may not use this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, do you have any uh, advice for our listeners? Um, I think just uh, research, take advantage. Um, a lot of your schools have the, the – the uh, career tech options. So um, in, uh, here in Montcalm, we got the Montcalm Area Career Center. You get some really good hands-on skills that you wouldn't get in a normal high school setting, and that's a great way of preparing for careers as well. All right. Uh, thank you for appearing on the MyMac Podcast. Hi, you're welcome. Thanks for having me. Thank you for watching uh, this segment of the MyMac Podcast. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Last but not least, let's look at Alex's interview on college advice. Hi, my name is Alex, and welcome to my segment of the MyMac Podcast, where I will be showing you some college advice and showing you that you have more options than just college. I graduated from Cedar Springs High School, and then I went to Grand Valley State University, and I went there for a couple years, but I was kind of just not really figuring out my path, and I didn't really know what to do. And so I went to Israel, and I lived there for a year and volunteered and gave food to people who had nothing and um, worked in some pepper farms and got to know um, some different people my age that were volunteering around the world. And then when I came back, I transferred to Western Michigan University and started doing my teaching degree. After I got accepted to all the colleges I did, I had to start narrowing them down, pros and cons, based on location, all this stuff. I ended up getting narrowed down to Michigan State and Ferris State. Michigan State was just too expensive, and Ferris State gave me more money. Um, and then I ended up actually loving it there. So, And they did have the program I wanted at the time, which was forensic biology. Funny enough, I'm no longer doing that. My intent was to go to college. Um, I enrolled, actually had a scholarship um, that would have covered most of my tuition. But 
even though I was a good student, it just wasn't for me. Or at least I felt it wasn't for me. So I went right into the workforce, got a full-time job up through the ranks at Lepinx, um, held several diff different full-time managerial positions. And I ended up, the last position I held was store director. So I was in charge of the whole store, basically. Um, and then from there, um, my folks owned a small store up in Sylvester that most people have heard of, the ice cream store up in Sylvester. And uh, my brother and I both went to work there for them. And then from there, we bought another store over in Blanchard, and I ran that store. Um, and then when my parents retired, my brother and I owned the two stores, and now I just I still own the, the store in Blanchard. And uh, along the way, when my kids were in high school, I, w I coached basketball here for eight years. Um, they're four years apart, so all, all eight years they were playing high school basketball. I was part of the coaching staff here. Um, and then, and I loved it. And I, I'm that guy that never, that never played any sports in high school because I was afraid. So it made it really easy for me, number one, to come back here because I love Lakeview, um, but to also try to change the culture here to help our athletic programs. And I really seek out kids like me and, and try to explain the benefits of high school athletics and high school in general. Figuring out what you're interested in is more important than determining whether you're going to go to college or do, get an apprenticeship or do a trade school. I think figuring out what kind of lifestyle you want to live and what kind of job you're willing to do to maintain that lifestyle is probably the most important decision. And there's so many options other than college that provide um, certifications or um, tech schools, trade schools, apprenticeships. There's so many other things besides college that provide a lifestyle where you can um, do what you want to do and do have a job or a train trade or a skill that you want to do the rest of your life so there's a lot of other options besides college. And what advice would you give to the class of 2024? Uh, work hard, keep focused. I know you guys all want to be done with school right now but to just keep working on your goals and remember that there's so many exciting big things coming. You just have a little bit more work to do. Proud of you. So as they're going into college or the future in general, I would just say choose carefully. Make your, it's okay to not like to look at everything and take your time and take any choice. Don't feel like you have to be rushed to making any choice you want to make. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.